We oui, we oui, we are in Paris. Hey, and we're gonna talk about planetary. Wait, what? We're we're not in Paris. Where are we? Hey, we're in Rome. I was wrong. We're in Rome. What? We're. I'm at home. Oh man, I'm at home. So in this episode, we are going to be disassembling this uh, drill right here. And the reason we are gonna do this is I believe there is planetary gear sets in here. Uh, the reason I believe this is because when I turn it here, I can see the motor turning at a faster rate than uh, what this is. And since both shafts are coaxial, bet you there's some planetary gears in there because that is the best way to do it. I mean, why would you have another shaft and you have a motor on one shaft and then turning another shaft and then that shaft turning the first shaft? Doesn't make sense when you can do all you want in a simple planetary gear system. Hey, if you like what you see so far, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. Now this drill right here is a hyper tough one. Yes, I bought it at a pawn shop for like 12 bucks. All right, now I don't know exactly what hyper tough is. I know what tough is, but hyper tough? I don't know. So we're gonna find out if this thing is hyper tough as well. All right, so let's get started. All right, let's see if we can pry this thing apart now. No. Oh, gloriousness. Gloriousness. All right, so pretty simple. We've got our, <laughs> our two shells. Oops, all those screws, oh man. We got motor, drill shaft, and let's see. Yeah, I can definitely see that there's gearing in there. So I bet you right in here, some planetary gears. Okay. We got this thing, we can uh, pull it off as well. Uh, our trigger assembly here is uh, pretty simple. It's just, uh, I don't know, I'm sure it's some sort of uh, potentiometer, high, high current potentiometer. Now let's see what else we can get off here. Let's see. Here's the motor mount plate that I just disconnected. We got some stuff here. It looks like a oh, oh, uh, thrust bearing, uh, probably some sort of seal as well. And look at that. We got three planetary gears right in there. All going around the sun. What we're doing is we are turning the motor connects directly to the sun. Looks like the output is connected to the planets. Now I'm trying to figure out what the ring is connected to. All right, so you can see here that as I spin the, the drill shaft, I'm actually 100% attached to the carrier of the planetary gears here. All right, then the ring has little nubs on the back here, which uh, interact with this ball bearing. So if I took this part apart, and I may, uh, I would find out that there's a spring pushed up against this uh, ring gear. And if the torque gets too much, there, the little tabs right here would slip on what's in there and it make that clicking sound as you know you over torque something. So that's what I'm guessing there. We'll find out a little bit later. So now let's figure out what the speed reduction is. We gotta count the number of teeth on the ring and the sun. We'll also count the number of teeth on the planets so that we can figure out exactly 
what the ratios are. We really don't have to count the number of teeth on the planet because we know that they mesh and it will be very predictable by a formula. So but we're just gonna verify that formula. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure this tooth, I'm gonna make a big mark and then I'm gonna start counting and at every uh, 10 teeth, I'm gonna make another mark so that way I don't have to count all of them and if I lose count, uh, I don't have to go all the way back to zero. So we'll start with the ring here. One, two, three. Look at that, I got 45 teeth on the ring. Let's count the, the planets here. Now this is interesting. There's actually two sets of planets on here. Hmm. Oh. All right, so on our ring gear here, I found that there was 45 teeth, and then I flipped it over and realized something cool. This is actually a two-stage planetary gear system. So on our first stage, we have the motor inputting into the sun here, turning the planets, which turns the carriage. All right, the carriage is then mounted to the sun in the next one, and we have a separate set of planets that go around it and then attached to a different ring gear. So we're gonna have, we have two planetary systems with the carrier on the first one driving the sun of the second one. So this is gonna be fun to figure out. All right, let us look here at our 45 and I wanna just see if all the teeth line up. And I think they do, I think that's how you get it assembled. I think the teeth are cut all the way across. So it's only one, one set. So. That, both rings have 45 teeth in their gears. So let's count up how many teeth are on the planet here. We'll make a mark. 18, 18. Sun two has, we'll just go for more that's missing. Nine. And we're done with this side. We can put these aside here. All right. So I wonder if these are the same. So the, all the planets are the same. So planet one equals 18 as well, which pretty much means that if I disassemble this, I'm gonna have a nine tooth gear here as well. Almost guarantee it. And if I don't, it means I miscounted somewhere. All right. Look at that, nine. Okay, so that's, hey, that's pretty cool how, what we found out here. I also want to point out here that the sun gear on the one has a little flat spot in it to fit over the motor. And that way you don't have to use a tang or anything to get them to, to fit together. It's just a, a nice little uh, simple uh, mechanism to do so. Uh, this also holds with my theory that the ring will slip when the torque becomes too much because if the ring slips, there's really nothing to have motion. Uh, well, only when we hold the ring steady does it give us motion outward. All right, so let's go back up to our studio and figure out exactly what our ratios will be here. So when we disassembled the drill, we found our planetary gear system was actually a double planetary gear system, so you know, two for the price of one. And it's uh, a fixed ring, mostly, unless the, um, you know, there's too much torque, then the, the ring will start slipping. Uh, but we have a, a sun gear that drives the planet, and that set of planets drives the next sun, and then the planets are the output of that. And according to our gear counting, we had 45 teeth on the ring, nine teeth on the sun, and the planets all had 18. So we can first do our math and say that 45 minus nine is 36. 36 divided by three is 12. So we have the uh, a proper number of planets. It didn't come out to 12.25 or whatever. So we are good there. 
Uh, we can also do our calculation on the speeds and when we put in one RPM and we do our calculation here, uh, we find out that we have 0.16666 repeating uh, ratio out. So that's a, a one to six ratio if I put. So with each stage in the planetary gear set, we get a one to six ratio of reduction. So for over six revolutions in, we get one output on each of them. So when we multiply the uh, one to six and one to six ratio, we get a one to 36 overall ratio, which is how our drill gets so much power from such a small motor. Uh, motors like running at high speeds, so uh, having that reduction probably isn't that much, but getting that extra torque out of there, that's a big deal to anybody drilling something or uh, driving a screw with that. So having the extra torque is very important to the success of a drill. Now I can imagine that having a uh, higher voltage input uh, probably would require a higher gear reduction ratio to get even more torque while keeping the motor probably at an optimum uh, speed that it can give uh, a lot of speed and a lot of torque uh, with very high efficiency on the motor. So thank you for watching this video. Be, be sure to give us a like if you liked it and be sure to subscribe 